Today, we're going to be talking about Microsoft Dynamics 365, specifically about sales process functionality, including creating and tracking leads, quotes, orders, and more. Welcome to Dynamics 365 Sales. Today, we're going to go over sales process functionality. To start, we've created a lead record. Please pay attention to the top of the screen. We have a lead to opportunity sales process. This is our business process flow that's used to assist a salesperson with qualifying a lead and creating an account, a contact, and opportunity record. A lead within Dynamics 365 Sales is also known as a prospect. On this particular record that we're looking at, in the contact section on our lead record here is where we're gonna enter our contact information. All of this information added here will be used to create the contact record after this lead is qualified. As I scroll down a bit more to the company section, all of the information that's entered within this company section here will be used to create the account record after this lead is qualified. As I scroll up to the top of the page, you'll see in the middle of my screen is the timeline. This timeline section is used to track your system posts, your sales activities, as well as notes with attachments. System posts are records that are automatically cataloged by the system when any type of action happens that relates to this record. For example, we have a system post down here to say that my user BCS demo created this lead record called John demo. Notes and attachments can be added to this timeline as well. You can click on the enter notes section here within the timeline and you can also add whatever title as well as the body text that you need to add for this particular note. You can click on the paperclip icon to add an attachment and you can click on add note to add this note to the lead record so it will display within our timeline. The last thing that gets added to our timeline here is our sales activities. These sales activities can include phone calls, tasks, appointments, and emails. So we're gonna go over adding a sales activity here. You can click on the plus sign within the timeline here, and you can add your appointment, email, phone call, or task as needed. As an example, we have a couple of emails listed in our timeline here. It starts off with an email here that was sent from my user BCS demo to this lead record, John demo. John responded to us and his response was tracked within the timeline here uh, where he's asking for a call to schedule for tomorrow. So within our timeline, we're also tracking our email correspondence with this particular lead, John demo. So you can see as I highlight right here, this email from BCS Demo, this was sent to John directly from Dynamics 365 Sales. We were also able to track John's response using the Dynamics 365 app for Outlook. So at this point, we're gonna take a moment to take a look at the Dynamics 365 app for Outlook and how that works with Dynamics 365 Sales. So in a separate tab, I have my Dynamics 365 app for Outlook open. Here is the email correspondence between my BCS demo user and our lead record here for John demo. At this point, his response is tracked regarding here. So this right hand side pane, this is a direct look into Dynamics 365 sales. So I can go ahead and click on this John demo lead record here, and I can get a direct look within our Dynamics 365 sales system. 
as well as the stage that the lead is in within our lead to opportunity sales process. I can scroll down a bit more here. You can see that same contact information that we saw on the previous screen, as well as the company information. As I continue to scroll down, we'll also see the timeline information that's being tracked and any other information that was displayed on the lead record within Dynamics 365 sales. This is a direct look into our Dynamics 365 sales system. Within Dynamics 365 App for Outlook, we also have the ability to create and track calendar appointments that relate to specific records within Dynamics 365 sales. In his email, he asked about scheduling a call for tomorrow at 10 a.m. We're gonna go ahead and schedule that call directly out of Dynamics 365 sales. At this point, we can go ahead and go into our timeline on the John Demo lead record, and we're gonna create a new appointment. From here, we will get a quick create appointment form that opens up for us here. We can add our subject. We can add a location if we have one and then add the start and end time. In this case, we're gonna to say tomorrow at 10 a.m. At this point here, we can go ahead and save and close. This appointment will go out directly to John Demo, and we will also get a calendar appointment created in Outlook that will be synchronized from Dynamics 365 sales. So at this point, we've identified that this particular lead is ready to be qualified and turned into a contact, account, and opportunity record. In order to do this, we can click on the Qualify button. I'm gonna go ahead and click Qualify at this time. This is gonna move us from the Qualify stage in our Lead to Opportunity sales process to the Develop stage. At this point, our lead was successfully qualified and we have moved from the Qualify stage to the Develop stage. And we're now looking at the Opportunity record. Qualifying the lead also created a John Demo contact as well as a John Demo Company account record, and they're both now related to our Interest in Products Opportunity record. So at this point, a user would go ahead and go into the system and develop their opportunity. You can use the stages within the Lead to Opportunity sales process to assist the salesperson with developing and proposing and closing their opportunity. These stages can be completely customized to whatever you need. Same thing with our steps within the stage. So these are different fields within our opportunity record here. These can also be customized based off whatever the requirements are. So we can fill in whatever we can, customer need, proposed solution, identifying our stakeholders and identifying competitors, and we can go ahead and move to the next stage of propose. Adding product line items requires us to add a price list to this opportunity record. A price list identifies the different products and the specific pricing that they're sold at and for this particular customer. I went ahead and selected my default sales list as my price list, and I can now go ahead and add products to my opportunity. On my add products window, I can easily select the product I want to add and update the quantity as needed and click the add button like so. At this point, once I'm ready and feel like I have all of my products added to this opportunity record, I can click on the Save to Opportunity button.
Now we can see my product added to my product line item here for this particular opportunity. At this time, since we are in the proposed stage of the lead to opportunity sales process, we can go ahead and create a quote for this opportunity. I'm going to click on the quotes tab here. And I'm going to click on the plus new quote button. This will create a related quote to my opportunity record. It will also bring across the same name of that opportunity record, the price list, the products of that opportunity record, as well as the customer information. We also have a direct link to the opportunity record if we need to go back to that opportunity record for additional information. The quote form itself is gonna have pretty general information. Any shipping information that you're aware of can be added at this time, in addition to any address, bill to or ship to address information. Once again, our products were brought over from our opportunity record. When the quote is ready to be sent to the customer, all we have to do is click the Activate Quote button. Activating the quote moves the quote from the in-progress status to an active status and also locks this record down into read only. So this prevents users from making any changes to our quote record because at this time, this is the actual quote that we wanna send out to our customers. When we're ready, we can go ahead and click on the export to PDF option here at the top. This will allow us to pick our quote format that we wanna to send to our clients. So I can click on this quote summary page here and I can either download this as a PDF I can email this directly to the client or I can save this to SharePoint. After this quote is sent out to your customer, you can go back to your opportunity record like so. And you can fill out the propose stage within our lead to opportunity sales process. And whenever you're ready, you can move from the proposed stage to the closed stage by clicking on this next stage button. At this time in the closed stage, the system thinks that you're on your way to getting the approval on the quote you just sent out from your customer. So we can go ahead and move through these steps here. and we can either save or finish this business process flow as needed. And we can go back to our quote record here to move further along the process. After a quote is exported and sent to the client, the client may have some changes that they want made, whether it's on pricing or quantity or the product itself. If that happens, it's really easy to make a change to the quote record. We can click on this revise button on the active quote. Clicking on the revise button is actually going to close out the previous quote record as lost but it will create a new quote record with the same quote ID and with a revision ID of one with the same information as the previous quote. Here is where you can make your changes. After you've made your changes, you can go ahead and activate this quote once again to put it into read only mode. And you can use the export to PDF button 
to send the PDF version of your quote to your client. So at this point, we are ready to create our order for our approved quote that we sent to our customer. So now I can click on the Create Order button at the top of my screen. And on our Create Order window, I can set what we want to update our quote status reason to. We're going to update it to one since we've won this quote. We can update our date one to a different date. By default, it will show today's date. We can add a description as well for any additional notes that we might want to add, as well as we can choose whether or not to close our opportunity record or calculate actual revenue from our quotes. So at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and click OK to create our order. So now what you're seeing on my screen is the order record that was created from our previous quote record that was one. You'll see the name that came across is the same name that was on the previous quote record. We also have the same price list as well as the same product information that we had listed on the previous record as well. On the right hand side here, under sales information, we have a direct link to our original opportunity record, as well as the originating quote record that was used to create this order and the potential customer information as well. Salespeople can then add their shipping information as needed and the bill to and ship to address information as needed as well. At this point, some organizations might do an export of all of their order information and import that order information into their accounting system. We also have the ability to build out an integration between Dynamics 365 sales and your accounting system to automate that process of pushing over the order information from Dynamics 365 sales to the accounting system for further processing. And that's going to conclude our sales process functionality within Dynamics 365 sales. Thank you, Kelsey, for showcasing the Dynamics 365 solution. And thank you, Dynamics 365 community, for your attention. We hope you enjoy this video. Subscribe to our channel if you want to learn more about utilizing Dynamics 365 to grow your business. Click here for our related videos. Utilize our website down below.